Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today I want to talk to you about top down mixing. Top down mixing is kind of like jump starting your mix, taking a mix at its very, very early stage and getting it much closer to final mix really early on, really quickly, with only a couple of tools. And in this video, I want to make the case that everybody should be implementing at least a little bit of top-down mixing in your process, and they should be implementing it as early on as they can be. So what exactly is top-down mixing? Well, it's kind of the reverse of the way most of us think of our mixing process. So our mix is made up of a bunch of individual tracks, right? Our bass, our guitars, our vocals, whatever you have in your song, it doesn't have to be those elements, whatever you have in your song, all of these individual tracks and they all run together and eventually leave GarageBand and then we listen to it in MP3 or a WAV file or wherever you listen to music. And at that point, you're just listening to one stereo file. Well, before it leaves GarageBand, it all travels through the master track. So the master track, if you hit B and bring up your smart control window, you can go over to master right here and that takes you to a set of plugins that are processing on your master track. So all of your individual channels are running through these plugins on your master track. And so you can do a little bit of subtle processing to the entire mix together in one place right here. So you wanna be very subtle with this because this is not actually applying any processing to individual tracks, it's the entire song together. It's like adding a little more brightness to your entire song. So the two components that you really wanna focus on on your master track are a little bit of EQ and a little bit of compression. And it's amazing what just these two plugins can do. Listen to this without these two plugins on and then I'll engage them. It's kind of crazy, right? The vocals are a little more up front. The guitar feels a little bit further forward. Everything feels a little bit brighter, a little bit more present. The change with just those two plugins is drastic. And this is just on a static mix. I've not done any individual processing on any individual channels. I've only set the volume and the panning on my individual tracks. And this EQ and compression is all that I've set. And we're already hearing that much change in this mix. Now, I strongly encourage you to be using a reference track as you're setting these two plugins. A reference track just being a professionally mixed song that's in a similar genre, similar overall sound is what you wanna go for. And just pay attention to, is their song a lot brighter? Does it have a lot more top end than mine? A lot more treble than my mix? And if so, use your EQ to dial up a little bit more of that, or does it have way more low end? As long as you've set your static mix and got all of your individual levels where you want them to be in terms of pan location and volume, then you can start to make these subtle changes on EQ and bring out a lot more of those components very, very quickly, very, very subtly, very, very naturally. That's the big key component here is that it's a very natural processing. So a couple of tips to help with this. You want to have very small boosts with your EQ. You're doing very little work here. So you'll see if you look down at the gain down here that I'm doing no more than three decibels at any point on my booster cuts. And essentially, as you're trying to find the points that you want to boost and cut, which will vary song to song, so they're not going to be exactly the same as what we have here, but they will typically be in kind of these four main areas, starting with this upper mid-range area here, the brightness, which is from here and above, which you can control with just this one shelf filter here, and then down in the low end and a little bit in the low mid range here. Not every mix is gonna need adjustment at all of those points. There might be different places that you might need in your mix. Your mix might be too bright. You might need to be scaling it back a little bit on the master track. You might have too much low end. You might wanna scale it back on the master track. Although that might be an indicator at this stage that you just need to turn your bass guitar down or whatever bass source you have in your mix down a little bit but you also could potentially just do a little bit of an EQ cut there and get it closer to where you want it to be in the end. And the great thing is by doing a little bit here, adding a little bit of brightness here, we can do more natural, more subtle processing on all your individual tracks. You now know how much brightness you're adding to your overall mix with this EQ. So this EQ, again, alone is taking our mix from kind of this dull sound to a brighter, a little bit more defined sound. 
subtle, but makes a really, really big difference. Okay, second area, the compression. On here, I'm using the Analog Obsession Buster SE. This is a completely free bus compressor that's intended for your master track. It's currently my go-to master track compressor. I think it sounds really, really great. But whether you're using this compressor or just if you pull up the stock compressor in GarageBand, either way, what you want to be looking for here is a very, very small amount of compression. Now, what I like about this compressor is that you can actually see how much compression is happening. With the stock compressor, there's no visual representation of how much compression is happening. Sometimes you get an indicator over here, but as you can see right now, we don't have that indicator. So that can be a little bit frustrating because you really need to see roughly how much compression is happening. So if you don't have it, go grab this uh, Buster SE compressor from Analog Obsession. It's completely free, sounds really great. The settings you wanna be looking for here are a slower attack, typically 30 milliseconds, 10 maybe, but typically I'm in 10 to 30 millisecond range. You wanna be pretty slow on your release. This is gonna be 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 1 1.2, somewhere in this range typically on the release. You could try the auto release as well if you wanna try that. And then you, a lighter ratio. So typically I'm around two on the ratio. If you're working on rock, you could be up as high as three or four uh, can work on rock music and then your mix is all the way up. Don't worry about any of these options over here or these options. This is just a bypass, by the way. And then you just wanna bring down your threshold until you're getting a couple of decibels of compression in a louder section of your song. So here, we're getting one to two, maybe three decibels of compression. And then you just use Makeup Gain to make that back up. Take this away. It's amazing. It just kind of glues it all together. Makes it feel a little bit more cohesive. It's a really, really cool trick. So two plugins and we have a much better mix. Again, we've kind of jump started a mix. We've gotten it much closer to the final mix with just two plugins on our master track. So definitely try this out. I strongly encourage you to be incorporating this into your mixing process and as early as you can be. So as, as early as you finish your static mix, start processing just a little bit on the master track before you go to do individual EQs and compression on any individual tracks. This is really gonna help you get a more natural, more cohesive sounding final mix. But to be clear, top-down mixing is not the full mixing process. You still need to incorporate some other elements to create a complete mix. So I've put together something to help you with that. I've put together a completely free six-step checklist that walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them inside GarageBand completely free. There's a link to it in the description below where you can grab that checklist completely free, so be sure to pick that up. Before we go, I wanna hear from you. Are you already doing any master track processing? What do you like to use on your master track? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.